Hey, I'm Chloe Caroline. And I'm Shauna Petruno. And welcome to Unwritten, an unedited podcast made for your story. To be heard, to be shared, to be written. Hello, it's Chloe Caroline. And Shauna Petruno. And welcome to another episode of Unwritten. We have a new topic today, Shauna. Yes, we do. Yes, and it's a new year, 2024, which kind of brings us to the topic of, you know, goal setting, New Year's resolutions, all of that, which are great things. I mean, we're big manifestors, so always, you know, I feel like we both like to set intentions and um, we're both very driven people, so definitely big goal setters. But we were kind of talking about, you know, when does that become excessive, I guess? Um, the different sides of that, the toxic sides of that, the the pressures we put on ourselves that either lead us to overworking, to burnout, um, or on the flip side, never really achieving those goals because we kind of feel paralyzed and overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you kick us off with your take and your, I guess, your experience? Yeah. Well, I love that you kind of hit on both both sides of it. So honestly, I have so much to say on this topic for sure. So there's a great side of setting a goal where it gets you to go in the trajectory of your dreams, which is great. And I could definitely share with my dream of like being a model and getting to model. But then on the flip side, it's like the, the loosest like basically being enthralled in the beauty world and always striving for perfectionism and how far is too far. Um, And I see that all the time being in the beauty industry on all sides of it, Mm -hmm. where people start to change their faces and they're so stuck with filters and exercise where exercise can be an addiction. I know like many years ago, I actually really struggled with an exercise addiction and you get like the highs of exercising and you feel so great when you do it, but there's a point where you can start to injure your body. So realizing like starting, like, I think a lot of people, they'll set a goal for new years and like, I want to lose five pounds, but also Mm -hmm. like having the ability to realize like things start with small baby steps. Like you don't switch everything all at once. Right. Right. And writing it down. Whereas when it can become toxic and has become toxic in my life is when that goal is like, there's other factors, say something happens in your life. And this one goal may, maybe it's to lose like five pounds for someone who's listening or you're working to be a model and it's starting to interfere with your mood and you're noticing Mm -hmm. you're getting irritable and you're maybe having like emotional reactions to things because you need to do this. I think that's when it starts to get toxic when other parts of your life are like you need to do it. It's almost becoming like a drug, right? Like this this goal and for you being a singer songwriter, I'm sure um, you've had it. it it's like, mm-hmm. I need to be perfect. I need to do this. And now mm-hmm. it's getting in the way of your relationships with other people and how you're showing up in your life. Uh, right. So that's one side of it for sure. Yeah. No, I love actually, I love that you said that that's a telltale sign because it, it, it really is. And it's, I think it's really difficult because, you know, we obviously need, we, th- there's a certain level of, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Like self-confidence we get from sticking with our goals, right? From making sure that, you know what, if I made, you know, whatever, a a promise to myself to get up every day and to go to the gym or to eat a salad for lunch every day um, or whatever, journal for five minutes, whatever it is, like those little goals. And obviously consistency is, is key and it is great and it can be really monumental in in achieving the things that we want but to get attached so much so to missing to not doing that you know what i'm saying like when yeah. it becomes like you said where it's like okay well friends you're getting, birthday party yeah, yeah like, you're missing friends, yeah you're missing friend. out on life right exactly it's, yeah it's it's causing imbalance in other areas or like you know, I can't go out to, to my friend's birthday dinner because that means that I won't have had my salad today, you know, like instead. Yeah. like or And realizing yeah, like, 
that those pieces could all fit in. So like, yeah, set a deadline, you know, like, Mm -hmm. um, set the goal. Like, for myself, it's like, I want to do X amount of photo shoots. That's great. Mm -hmm. But then what happens, like for me, I'll just use the example that's newest. My dad is in the hospital for three months, you know, like, is it really realistic for me to be Mm -hmm. able to do that? And it's being like, okay, so life happens, but how do we pivot? So maybe we go down to one photo shoot. And then when things change, so you have to realize like life is going to happen and you have to pivot, but you don't give Mm -hmm. up the goal. You just work the goal into your life. Does that make sense? Right. Yes, exactly. And, and exactly. And I think especially when it comes to health and wellness, it's like, it's, it's unwell if all of a sudden it becomes the main priority, like the, the focus, you know what I mean? To the point where you can't live your life and you can't enjoy a meal with friends and, um, or skip a day because you're not feeling well, um, et cetera. And so it's, being able to have like grace for yourself in those moments and also looking at it maybe as more of a lifestyle rather than yes. a diet, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and with beauty, like I feel like the standard of beauty, like I want to go into this one is like little girls using retinol at 10 years old. Like, what? This- yeah, I like where I work, they're coming in and little girls pumping on makeup. I'm talking to 90 year olds doing filler to their face, like to look mm-hmm. It's, it's becoming crazy. The beauty standard is becoming crazy that people are so this goal. We all want to be the best self. And yeah, I like, I'm all for like being on all sides of the beauty side of it, like modeling and that. But when does that become toxic that you can even like, like go out without makeup or you can't like that standard of beauty start to like depreciate you. And I think again, it's great to be like, okay, I'm going to do my self care. I'm going to do this. But like with anything, realize like there's wiggle room, you know, like it's sure. like do your skincare routine, but you don't have to look like, um, a, like, uh, I don't want to say anyone's name, but like a, yeah. a certain supermodel, or you don't have to right. be that person. Like, where's your beauty standard, you know, because, and there's so much misinformation. So a lot mm-hmm. of people could be doing, different things that are actually disruptive. Like I see a lot of people getting filler and then they're using gua sha and, and it's mm-hmm. like, they don't know what they're doing. And they're like, Oh, I just want to be my best self. And actually these, these are toxic things that happen over time. Like whether you're over exercising, like over time you can deplete yeah. your bones and get osteoporosis. So that's when a goal becomes toxic. How yeah. the goal to lose weight or be your best self? That's great. Or yeah. become a model, but when you start to hate the process and you start yeah. to hate your life daily, that's yep. a huge problem. And for you, like, I'd love to hear your side of becoming a singer songwriter, because yeah. I'm sure there's times where there's pressure on you to get this song out. And then you've got your boyfriend or your mom right. and you're yeah. like, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. And I've been there. Like, I gotta get these photo shoots done. I gotta get this podcast cuff. And then like, you're in this hustle mode, but now yeah. you're losing out on First off, trusting the universe. Like, we're not allowing it to show up in magical ways. Right. And then second, you're being, no offense, probably, you're being a B-I-T-C-H to the rest of the world to get your goal and you're losing yourself, which is pure love. So, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, (laughs) it is, this industry that I am in is a very, in some ways, I would say very selfish industry. Um, because, and, and you, you almost have to be because you are, especially like as an independent artist, um, I am my own business. I wear 5 million hats and I no doubt have to be the hardest worker of anybody that is like (laughs) on my team. Cause if I'm not, then they certainly won't be, you know, like I have to be my biggest believer because it is such a competitive industry um, to succeed in, really, to like, have actually a flourishing career, um, a stable, you know, enough career, yeah. whatever it is. Um, and so, yeah, there are so many times when I've had to say, like, no to things um, or stay up way too late or overdo it um, and do way too much in one day to try to fit it in. Um, but you know, and it got for me to the point 
where, yeah, I have, I have hit burnout Mm -hmm. multiple times, multiple times, but I would say, you know, the biggest burnout that I, I dealt with was maybe like in 20, let's see, like 2018 ish. And it was like, I was like a bear. I was like, I felt like a shell of myself. It was like every day, like I had to, I was just trying to balance so many things at once. Like whether it was like friends or my relationship that was unhealthy, plus making sure I worked out every day, like like a, like a maniac, um, not eating enough so that I could make it to sessions in time. I wouldn't like sit down and, you know, let myself just like enjoy a meal. And like, I was just going, going, going to the point where like I things were succeeding in my life but in in my in my work maybe <laughs> but like I still kind of was like one it's you know I feel like there's more even right and so there was <laughs> kind of that which puts a fire in your butt no doubt but you know my everything else was kind of just like at a at this like level of not pause but like it was just like okay, this is it, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's fine, right? Everything else in my life was like, it's fine. Like, I guess, like, I'll just like handle it, right? You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It could, could it be better? Could my relationship be something that I actually want to really be in and thrive? Maybe, but like, at the same time, I just don't even have the energy at this point to deal with it, you know? So it was just kind of like, all these things were just sitting there, like almost like idling <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because I was so burnt out. Um, and I kind of just like had to get to the point where I needed to make a change. And that's, that is actually like when I moved to LA, because I even realized in my music, I was like, I feel like I'm like making really great music, but at the same time, like, I'm not even like living my life. Like, what yeah. am I writing about at this so, point? You know? and that's when it becomes toxic is when you're yeah. using your life and your goal. So yeah. like, and exactly. And what do I want? Right. Like being able to really recognize like, what do I want? Well, I don't, I don't even know anymore because it's so out of whack, you know, like, I don't even know the type of relationship I want because now I'm just like so lost in this. Like, yeah, I think I know, but like, this doesn't really quite feel like it, but yet, you know, I don't really want to let it go either, you know? And that's kind of for me where I was at and same with like, yeah, my, 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 the one thing you can control is your, your exercise and your eating and stuff like that. And for me, that's where I released stress, but, you know, was slowly, but surely definitely like losing too much weight or just, and, you know, it wasn't even about like necessarily how much I weighed on the scale. It was just like, that was my, that was my thing, right? Like that was my like sense of, uh, power in my life felt like I was bettering myself, but I wasn't because at the same time I wasn't sleeping enough. I wasn't eating enough. So it's like, if those things aren't there, then my whole health. Yeah. (laughs) It's all about balance, right? So like how how much is a career or a perfect body when your bones are hurting or then you end up with osteoporosis, which is actually to age you. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. at times in my life, like when I was really sick, like relating very similarly, it's like I was working out all the time, but I ended up with osteopenia that I actually had. And like, I literally looked super old, you know, and Mm -hmm. at what cost it's like, yeah, I feel good when I'm doing this. But then you all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is actually depleting. I can't go out with people if I miss my workout. So I think there's so many things in life and like for what, like a modeling career or for music to say you did something. But I think like having a goal when you're setting goals really and truly, I, I, this is my belief. I don't know what your belief is, but Mm -hmm. it shouldn't just be one part. It should be like holistic goal. And like, I talk about that, like spiritually, emotionally, um, lifestyle, all of it, like it should be a holistic goal. And I think when it becomes toxic, like we're talking about right now is when you really go down that path where you only have the one goal. You're not thinking of the full picture, like my relationships, my family, am I being the best version of myself balancing? Because it's all interconnected. It's not one or the other. When you become too much of your body, 
you're at a mm-hmm. whack spiritually and you become yeah. too much spiritual then you kind of go into some people have been known to go into like psychosis you know right like so it, it's got to be like call it kind of all encompassed you know like, right yeah and work life balance like there, there's a reason people say that yeah and that's a whole other type of being able to, to, to have the boundaries and learn how to create your boundaries so that you can have that balance. That's the type of, um, I guess, self, um, what is the word I've been like trying to find? Awareness? Episode. Self-awareness. Sure. Yeah. Self-awareness that like is really like what the focus should be, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, again, it's like hard to not, get lost in your goals, especially if you're a very highly motivated person. I mean, yeah. I'm always like the type of person, there's a million things that like, I want to achieve and um, believe that I can achieve. <laughs> and so it becomes, I mean, I've even noticed lately, whether it's with manifestations or setting intentions, I mean, like, like I said, like, I, I really thrived when I first started writing out my what I was grateful for every day and my goals and blah 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 and was doing that every single day for like whatever a couple of years if I missed a day it wasn't the end of the world but then like I feel like this year especially like I feel like I've just like fallen off the wagon there and and part of me is like well why you know I think there's this pressure at least for me personally where I start writing down my goals and I and I and I, I can't stop Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's so many things that I know because there are, there really are like so many different sides of um, my career that it's, it is all over the place. And And then in my personal life. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's, I just keep going. Like the list literally never ends. Like even if you're on vacation as an independent artist or whatever entrepreneur, you're not technically like on ever. vacation ever <laughs> ever on yeah. vacation because right. I think we both relate to that because we both have our own businesses and like your brand and your yeah. music it's it's hard like it's really mm-hmm. hard to but I I love that you talked about the gratitude part because I mm-hmm. think as you're reaching your goals like I think it's important like this is something I really love doing is like at the beginning of the year like I like to write out my goals and look at them and then mm-hmm. from the last year I pull them out and I see like what I've achieved to be great yeah. for it because you get so lost in the hustle of trying to achieve everything you really lose focus of how blessed you are to be sure. doing the thing yeah. that you're doing today like Chloe you're you get to be a singer songwriter yeah. you know like you know yeah. how people would like yeah. literally give their life to be every sure. day. So like wake up and be like, oh my God, I don't have a day job. Like, thank God. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. <laughs> like, it's, cause it's like so some, true. you like, uh, thank God I'm making money doing what I love and thank God I'm on this path. Have I right. hit maybe 5 million streams? No, but yeah, that's something I'm, at- I'm working towards. But I think the crazy part that I would say to you and myself is like, what happens when you get to 5 million streams, but you lose yourself in the process? Right. Exactly. <laughs> and you exactly. Like, a, like a person nobody wants to be around. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's true. Like you have to be, you have to be so in joy with your life in the present moment that like when those things happen, there is just these beautiful bonuses, but they can't be, it can't be like, I will only be happy then, or I will be the happiest then, you know, like it can't, you cannot live your life like that because it's also like when you get there you'll realize that there is always more there's always always more and you can (laughs) always do more and then it's the next thing like yeah I think a lot of people even with wedding planning right like Mm -hmm. if you're planning a wedding they're like okay to the big day but then what what after you know like you've got a whole so why not enjoy like even if you're not getting married or you're in a relationship like enjoy your partner every day you know like you're engaged for the rest of your life. Like that's my goal with someone is like every day is good. (laughs) Yes. Yes. No, that's, that's, that's like such a beautiful thing. And I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think I realized like, you know, just even as we're having this conversation that I need to like really get back to like writing down just like three or four and stopping at that and being okay to stop at that rather than feeling like I have to write, you know, everything that I yeah. need to do that day or whatever, all of my goals. Cause it really, yeah, it totally hasn't, it's, 
for me, it's just gotten so overwhelming. Honestly, it's just like, oh, I can't, you know, and I kind of have like burnt myself out there. And I totally like realized that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's something that I know also was really great for me to achieve stuff when I was doing it in a way that wasn't, I guess, so uh it didn't become so much, I suppose, yeah. you know? After yeah. Sure. And I think like that you, you have the self-awareness and I think like that's the warning sign is like, Oh, I for I love that you said I forgot to do my gratitude. And that's maybe like, mm -hmm. well, I'm so focused in the future that I'm not really living. Right. Know? I like mm -hmm. to, what I like to do is like, have monthly goals, weekly goals, and yearly goals, you know, yeah. and like, I'm working towards something, but like also realistic goals, measurable. Right. Um, so this month, like I did it like a self care thing, like I started like a little group and I was like, okay, I also have like, I created my book, I have all these things that I'm working towards, I want to create so many things, I want to model more, I want to do all this stuff. And I'm like, Shauna, like, what's this month? Like, what are you right. doing this month? Like, are you doing your photo shoots? <laughs> like, so yeah. the mind, and this is an actual proven fact, Chloe, the mind can only compartmentalize three things. <laughs> Like literally, like we literally, if you tell people all these different things, and this is where I've gotten like, but most people can only hold on to three, three little pivotal things, right? Like I was taking mm -hmm. a, a business course and they said, people can't really understand more than that, you know? So when you're saying I'm doing this, I'm doing this, your brain gets confused. And what a right. confused brain does is absolutely nothing. And that's right. another thing is a goal becomes toxic when you have so many of them that you can't do any of them. Right. Exactly. Or you just don't even know where to start. Right. <laughs> like, so, like break it down. So your goal yeah. is to like get healthy. Well, right. maybe this week you do like smoothie bowls, you know, Yeah. or, yeah. You, or your goal is to be like, write a new song. Maybe this week you write, um, like two new lyrics or whatever, you know, like you have it attainable, you know, like mm -hmm. it has to be attainable, a measurable goal that's not sure. overwhelming and carve out time for it. So like, I know mm -hmm. for myself, it's like, I have the deadline. I have a, like an even, I break it out even further, but what do you do for your goals? Like that's how my brain works. Yeah. Um, as someone who like literally had a brain in yours, I need to break things down really small. But what sure. do you do for yourself to help yourself with like goal setting? Yeah, I would say, well, I think that was a big one is writing it down. It's always been key for me because then it's not just floating in my head. Mm -hmm. Like it becomes a tangible thing that you can check off. Yeah. Um, and, and I have to do that. You know, it really, it really does help me. I think, again, my, my thing is there's just so many different balls in the air it's like well which one do I actually prioritize first do you know what I mean or something else pops up as you're getting one done and you know as somebody too with like actually like diagnosed ADD it's like it can be paralyzing so yeah. like you know I thrive multitasking like I really do like honestly like I could be like sending an email right now and on this podcast like and I would be like that would be like fine you know what I mean yeah but like at the same time you know, it is, it does take so much energy and, um, and, and I think you get really, again, like confused as to like what you need to prioritize. I mean, that's always my thing, but writing it down, I would say is like super helpful for me. Um, mm -hmm. and like you said, breaking it, breaking it down as well. Um, what is, you know, today, actually today, what is the first thing that I need to do? Or what's if the I could pick only thing, like what's the, yeah. what needs to, like, that's what I do is like, what yeah. needs to get done today? Like if I don't yeah. do this, like this and like, what's something like, right. That I can put off till tomorrow. Right. Like, is and exactly. What and what, to do. Yeah. And what do I need to do for me? Like what would make me feel better to get this thing done? Whether that's okay. Yeah. I need to make sure that I, it could be whatever, have my cup of coffee, or I need to make sure that I step outside and go for a walk, or I need to go to the gym, or I need to call a friend or whatever your thing is, um, that would make doing the things that you know, you have to get done that day or whatever, more achievable, right? 
So do you break out your day? Like, what does a day for you as a singer songwriter look when you have like, say you have a photo shoot coming up? or mm-hmm. a, Yeah. Like what, how do you get your day started? Like, where do you prioritize? <laughs> it's that's, I, again, it's like, literally, every day is so different. And then sometimes things like change on a dime, especially with like you're dealing with other artists. So like, or writers or producers or just creatives in general who might bail like all of a sudden (laughs) or they have to shift things and suddenly it's pushed two hours and you're like okay you know so you're constantly pivoting but I would say for me like I always try to set aside an hour to to go to be outside and, and and walk like doesn't sometimes I'm working on my phone while I'm walking sometimes I'm not and I have nothing on I don't even have music on and it's just like me myself and I and the wind, <laughs> you know? Um, but for me, like, I would say that's like my, my, my biggest self dedication is like having that time to myself to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, or sometimes it is the gym as well. Um, but having the moment to like move, I get really antsy if I don't get a chance to move. I mean, it's stagnant I'm, energy, right? Like it just yeah. kind of builds up with you, especially I know for me, like I have a lot of energy and mm-hmm. I know like I straight up am not a nice person if I don't exercise. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I, yes. <laughs> and, but, and that's how I got addicted to be honest, mm-hmm. because I'm like, I'm nicer when I move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause I had yeah. so much energy, but I was just like, well, there's different ways to have your energy out, Shauna. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you can do it yep. in other creative ways, you know? Like- yes. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, same with like, yeah. Finding time to, to, to like cook dinner is like a big one for me too. Like, like I love to cook and so being able to like get creative and like, do that is is important to me but I would say yeah the the walking one's big um I would say I try not to do like I mean sometimes it happens where I have like <laughs> multiple calls back to back to back to back it definitely sometimes happens but um you know I try to like balance it so that I maybe but don't how, have more how- than two or something <laughs> in the day got um like for instance like you're right how does it how do you as a creator like uh-huh. go from having no song to creating a song like how do you yeah. create that with goal mm-hmm. setting oh um I mean that's that's a good question <laughs> I, I think that's that's like yeah that's I guess it's a whole it's a whole process I depends if I'm working with somebody else I mean you know today I had a session before this and the my friend was in Germany that I'm I'm working with and so it's been all pretty much virtual. And so we've had a number of sessions over the past couple of months and started out with us just like writing the song. Actually, I think he was in town in the, at the time. So we wrote it in person and then we got on and we uh, first thing first is we just did a basic um, track, you know, whatever guitar literally. And then I sang over it, did a scratch track and then he started building it out more. And then we did final vocals. And then after that, we came back again and we did like harmonies. And then today we did like the final, like kind of like run through of like, all right, is there any other like, you know, like any other vocals that we need? Any other, can you hear any other extra guitars or whatever, like certain parts that you feel like are missing to build out the rest of the choruses? Um, and so we kind of nailed that down and then he'll go and, and mix and master it when it's ready. And then once it actually is ready, that's a whole other process. Cause yeah, you gotta <laughs> then figure out how you're going to promote the song. So it's um, for you, like you have like these bits and pieces, but it's kind of ever changing. Like you were saying, yes. like it's, yes. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've realized too, I, it's, I mean, it's all very, it's a, it's a, such a process that like, sometimes you have songs that take like years and sometimes they take like, you know, a couple of days. It really just like depends like who you're working with and like what the purpose is, I guess, for the song. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that is in this state of always like unfinished, <laughs> I you know, that. it's, that's very applicable to our topic though. Yeah. It's goals. Like it's yeah. great to have them. Mm hmm when they better you but it's like an unwritten song you know it's like it 
we don't know when it's all going to come together. Yeah. No, you have to do like the footwork, but not get lost in it. (laughs) Sure. And it can't all, and they can't all come together at once. You know, like I, it's, it's too, it it would be too much. I mean, literally just like coming up with the freaking album cover and then promoting the song and there's only so many assets and financial ways to be able to get the song out there. And if you all of a sudden have like 12 collabs that you have to like promote it, what, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't always work um, or it would be way too much. So I have to remind myself of that too, because you know, you're just like, Oh, I want it done, you know? (laughs) Um, But I've also gotten caught on the other end of like constantly maintaining a state of something being un- unfinished in order to like I-, I think to keep it to keep it in my reach does that make any sense oh yeah so yeah no I, I got it I like, always something to work on so that it's like just yeah I guess still still go as much as you want it out it's like well then it's then it's done you know it's like let being able to like let it go um I think is a big as a big thing and not like um i guess keeping yourself like in a bunch in mindset like you're gonna write something else like yeah yeah exactly (laughs) yeah yeah totally totally i think it's that the perfectionism you know i Mm -hmm. think that is perfectionism like oh it could be a little bit better like i've done that like i'm sitting on like thousands of photos and i like put them out and i'm just like Maybe you should. <laughs> maybe you should. What about it? maybe yeah. maybe you should do those things? But that's when again, when goal setting can become toxic. You know, it's like sure. you're not trusting the universe. You're not. You're not like mm-hmm. it's. It's just like such a goals are so funny. Like yeah. Well, <laughs> and I think they can be also. It can be a state of safety in a way. If that makes any sense. It. It. If something is unfinished always it's um yeah it's it's safe right it's um it's like this is this is all in my grasp it's my um it's in my 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 boundaries right like it's um what's the word I'm looking for like yeah like (laughs) my limits almost you know and I don't know you kind of like self limit and I've like I realized like for me like personally like because there are so many things happening it's like oh just have all these things unfinished at once you know because at least I'm doing them but like they're all unfinished because you know because it's almost so overwhelming to finally like see them take off if that makes any sense yeah well I think I sometimes do that with our podcast you're like when should we release it I'm like well we should record the next one (laughs) yeah Back. that's so funny that you just like I literally called myself out there <laughs> no but I totally get that I totally get that and it's like oh when's the yeah exactly like we should post it and then it's like oh I really want to do this podcast but like I don't have you know the time that I have to like prioritize my own social media or this other thing it's like even though you want people to hear the podcast it's like it becomes you don't want it to become overwhelming but at the same time like you it almost becomes more pressure because you don't set a date for it right 100 so again writing it down is so important but yeah it's it's so funny i but i do think when you write things down it and, helps but that again having that realistic like yes that realistic. i think there were some things i i don't know i listened to a lot of business stuff so i think it was like a lot of people underestimate or overestimate what they can do in a day and underestimate mm-hmm. what they can do in a year or two years. So right. breaking down, like maybe have a two-year goal, like I'm going to get healthy and what does healthy look like? Well, maybe you start with drinking more water and going to bed 15 minutes yeah. earlier, you know, and like you do that for two months and now you have more energy to go to the gym, right? For- right. Or get on the treadmill for 10 minutes and those goals. And then you look back at it and you're like, wow, I did hit. I did lose five pounds, but you know what? I am, I'm healthy rather yeah. than just losing weight to lose weight. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. I totally do. I'm curious what you think about a lot of people, the reason they stick to their goals so consistently or whatever, stick to the routine, whatever it is, is because they're terrified to get off track <laughs> yeah. because they're afraid that it's going to be a total shambles, right? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like one, 
day is going to throw them off entirely. And, and, and for some people, like, I know that that can be the case, but it's like, how do you, how do you manage to like work balance into your life then if you are somebody who struggles with that, you know? Um, oh my gosh. Can you re-ask that? Cause I don't even know how to answer. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. Like for example, with New Year's resolutions, it's like, all right, I'm going to lose, I'm going to go on the paleo diet or whatever it is. And I'm going to, yeah, only eat paleo food. Well, like all of a sudden, like we said, like somebody invites you to pizza and, you know, you have a couple slices of pizza and then the next day you don't feel motivated to go to the gym anymore. And so then that night you go and you go get burgers. and You know what I mean? Like it just spirals. Some people, like if they're not super consistent. I think the, it's a mindset, like really and truly, I think that's the all or nothing black and white thinking, right? Like, yeah. oh, it's all over, you know, mm-hmm. I think that I like, ruined it. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing ruined by having pizza. Like pizza's not bad. You know, I think when yeah. you have any extreme in your head, good, bad, like good food, bad food. I never like in my cookbook that I wrote, I don't have good food, bad food. I have yeah. gives me energy. This makes me right. feel good. I think when you look at I'm going out for pizza. Is just pizza. Yeah. There's nothing like you're not going to freak out about it. You know, like it's one day and then you're yeah. just like, and if you feel a little bit more tired, you're just like, oh, that's why I don't eat pizza every day. Cause I feel a little bit more tired. Today's maybe yeah. a day where I'm going to watch a movie. And then I think you just, when that black and white thinking kind of goes away. And if you can't get out of that, perhaps you not trying to say everybody needs a therapist, but yeah. maybe there's a deeper rooted issue where there's perfectionism or something underneath because mm-hmm. there could be some sort of hidden um, limiting belief about yourself that right. if I do this, my whole, and then that self-sabotage at that point, yeah. that's a whole other yeah. can of worms that you might need to decipher with someone. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. No, that's, that's a great point. I think that's, that's really smart. It is finding that fine line between, you know, having, um, oh my God, I still can't think of the freaking word. Self, you said self-awareness. That is not the word I'm looking for, but it basically is that word. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're, oh my gosh, it's going to drive me. I like keep thinking self-realization. Like, I don't know what it is. Um, like when you have consistency within yourself, like when you have that sort of, that characteristic, you're... Self, oh my gosh. Not self motivated. I don't know. Oh my lord. Maybe it's, it is just consistent. I don't know. I rely on But consistency does breed confidence. Like, I think when you keep your promises, but again, having those short and long term goals. And then I think having other people, right? Like, yeah. Um, I started reading uh, the book Think and Grow Rich and I asked a few of my friends and I had like, I kind of put it out on social media. I think when you you also have others who are working towards their goals, like, and you're all cheering each other on, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. So I think like when you make goal setting and consistency, like if you miss a day, like if you miss a day of writing songs, like it's not all over, you're still a singer songwriter. Right. And yeah. If, if I miss a three months of not doing photo shoots, I'm still a model, you know? Sure. And if I like don't talk about skincare or didn't make a recipe, I still have a cookbook, you know? Like it does sure. depreciate. I think when that gets really toxic is when your identity is enmeshed with what you're doing. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's so important. And I think, you know, having people that can be like your accountability help in a way not to the point of like codependency but it's like even with our podcast it's like well to have somebody else to be like all right like what dates are you free let's make sure that like we're we're always too caught up and let's set you know let's do two weeks from now we're gonna do the next one and have someone to do it with you know like it does help, you know, like I would be lying if I said that it would, wouldn't be, um, as, as, uh, easy d- doing it by myself entirely, you know? Yeah. Um, cause you have to show up for somebody. Like sometimes it's, yeah. it's nice to, and they say like, if you start something, have like an accountability partner, you know, like that yeah. it's helpful. 
Sure. Exactly. And yes, I think that's, that's important. And knowing like where you need that, you know, for me, like with, with exercise and stuff, like I don't, I am the person like that can, can go and be like self-motivating by myself and be fine. But there are some people, my sister, she grew up playing on a ton of sports teams. She does really well with other people feeling like she's part of a team group workouts, yoga classes. I love those, but like, I don't need them to stay mm-hmm. consistent. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, yeah, she, she, she's more the type that needs them to stay consistent and that's okay. Right. Um, but we all have like our things. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I, I, I need you, Shauna. <laughs> <laughs> you, Chloe. <laughs> we can help realization that our podcast needs each other <laughs> yeah exactly it's true though honestly it is true yeah exactly and it's fine i'll i'll admit it i'll admit it <laughs> that's awesome it's better not talking to just like by myself <laughs> yeah it'd be kind of awkward to have like a goals resolution and then you're just sitting there talking to yourself that's... i know it's like we could definitely do it but it's like not i don't know it wouldn't be as not as fun you know <laughs> so I, I think like as we maybe like simmer down this conversation but i think the the process should be fun you know like yeah. the process should be enjoyable like um, yeah. whether you're working towards like writing a book, going back to school, make it something that's, you're not going to hate your life, you know, like yeah. you can enjoy the process because uh, it's going to sound a little morbid, but we're not promised tomorrow, right. you know, and yeah. you don't want to get so wrapped up in this goal and then yeah. you lose sight of the, pe- like all the other things. So like, if it's enjoyable and you're right. like, you enjoy it, like make Mm -hmm. goals you enjoy. I think. Yeah. So like if it's exercise, like you like walking, you said your sister likes yoga. Mm -hmm. I think it's got to be enjoyable. So you stick to it. And I think that's when it's not toxic. Like when you're, you're not hurting yourself, you feel in alignment, you know? Yes. Yes. I think that's a really good point. And I mean, if anything, that's like a big lesson that I learned from COVID was that like, it's, if you take a minute to like be present um the world isn't gonna end you know <laughs> if, yeah. if you yeah it, it, and and I I needed that I had to learn how to like write by myself again and like al- or more so allow myself to write by myself again because I reached a point even where I was like ah it's pointless if I'm not getting a demo from this or I'm not writing with somebody else like I just kind of was like meh but yeah, realizing that like, no, the reason I write songs is because it all started with me writing by myself when I was tiny, tiny and like, <laughs> and just getting lost in it and like, whatever, watching the hours go by as my creativity f- like flew and it wasn't getting necessarily recorded, you know? Yeah. So yeah. And it helps you become a better writer or for me in that case, you know, when I go into sessions or I have more ideas, you know, nothing's wasted. If it, if it feels good, like, you know, reach into that and lean into that. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that is the beauty of having like a good goal, you know, mm-hmm. it, it feels good when it starts mm-hmm. to feel bad, whether your body's hurting, you're becoming, yeah. be, it's a bad goal. <laughs> Mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly and and it's like and I think it's hard because it's it's you know it's not to say that like you're not gonna get tired right like you're not gonna get tired from doing something you even love having a good day right like but it's like there's a different it's a different feeling that's attached to it I guess you know yeah. what I mean like you're not gonna you, love it all the time but it's not gonna right. be like you're hurting yourself, you know, you're burning right. out, you're, you're becoming, you're losing the things that make you such a beautiful person. I think right. that that's the difference. Like, of course, it's going to be hard work. Like anything new is going to be challenging, right. you know, but that's mm-hmm. di- uncomfortable is different than yes. it's that, like, that's a big thing. Like, if you start a new yoga class, like it's, is it going to be awkward going standing with all these weird people like you've never right. seen before and you have social anxiety might be, mm-hmm. but yeah. by the end of the fourth class and the person's like, do you want to go get like a matcha latte or whatever you drink or re- mm-hmm. something? Then you're just like, what? Like 
it's yeah. it becomes the process becomes better, but it's going to feel awkward. Anything new that you start, like whether it's right. the of the year, it's going to feel weird. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and there are seasons of more uncomfortability than others. Definitely. Um, and I think also, you know, take it, take somebody who's, you know, an actor, you know, and they have to, to have, you know, they still have to have stable income. And so to some, or not stable, but just something to like live off of, you know, like when they might have to like work that waiter job or they might need to do something they don't necessarily, that's not their first choice to do something that they really, really want to do. Um, But I think, and I think that's what's hard. It's like, well, I dread going to be a waiter today. I dread, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to But then you see the big picture. Like, yeah, you're just like, well, like I've had to do that with circumstances as well. And you're like, but this allows me to do this. So so I'm going to suffer for a little bit. Like there's a short term suffer, Mm -hmm. but then maybe you're like, well, then you can maybe reevaluate. And if you really hate that restaurant, maybe you don't quit, right. but you look for a new job while you're at the restaurant. Right. And it's like, yes, exactly. Can, so you're never locked in. It's just like, you're, you're changing your perspective. Like, it's not like you can't do it. It's just, it may take a little longer. I may need to switch this job to a different place. Like I'm, yeah. I go to a different restaurant because I really don't like Bob over here. He bugs me, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah sure, sure. You know, so you're just, you nothing is ever like finite you know you yeah. could, you always have choices to enjoy the process more yeah exactly yep and and yeah we've talked about it before being like i get to do this you know mm-hmm. i get to 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 have a million things on my plate today because i get to be an independent artist i don't have to have a 9 to 5 right or whatever and like for me like for some people, like that's not they don't that that's their worst nightmare. You know what I mean? Like they hundred percent yeah. <laughs> they want they want consistency and blah 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 blah. For me, like this it is worth it. It is worth it for whatever those amazing shows that I have or to to see somebody's reaction to a song or to get to work with cool creative people like yourself or or whoever and that's the freedom that comes with that for me personally is worth the sacrifice maybe of like other consistent freedoms <laughs> um and but everybody has to pick their make their choices right for some people that's definitely not it <laughs> and i and i totally respect that you know I think, um, actually I had her on my podcast, Gabby, she, she always says to me, choose your heart, Shauna, like choose your heart. Like what Mm -hmm. is your heart? Like it's, it's hard to go to the gym, yeah. but it's also hard to have no energy and feel really uncomfortable in your body for some, so 10 minutes of like, maybe, okay, well, I don't like the gym, but I do like walking my dog. You choose your heart, right? Like anything that's new does feel hard. Yeah. So, but then you have to keep in mind. So like that is the crazy part of goal setting. It's like, it's basically like unraveling um, a string and you get to see what's on the other side of it. Right. Like, right. It's going to change as you evolve as a person, because we're constantly growing and evolving. Right. Yes, exactly. And your priorities can change over time. hundred you know? percent. And like, yeah. maybe you have a baby or something yeah. like now your family. So you're like, but it, you never get rid of the goal. Um, yeah. if it's a healthy goal for you. Um, yeah. and I think before like we wrap up cause it's getting lengthy, but I yeah. would say this, um, always ask yourself when you're setting a goal, um, is this coming? Cause I want validation from other people. Mm-hmm. Or is this something I truly love and I truly mm-hmm. want to better myself? And if it's coming from a place of self-love and self-care, that's a good goal. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I totally agree. And I think even it's like, it's even like more than bettering yourself is because you're amazing as you are, but it's like to, to be the best version of yourself. Like, yes. Like that, right? I think that is the ultimate goal is to just be the best you and not yeah. be anybody else, but be the best Chloe and I'm going to be the best Shauna. Yeah. You can be the and, best. and those include the, the, the moments too, where you're not feeling maybe the greatest someday. Like that's the thing. It's like, 
you're not constantly going to be at mountaintop high. No. Like just, yeah, even if you're in the best shape of your life, have a great relationship, have the job of your dreams. Like it doesn't mean that like everything is dandy 24 seven, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Or, or that, yeah, you can't. Or you can, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like um, there's so much more I want to say on it, but like, going through like my own recovery, there was days when I was going through it, like I would have bad days and I'm like, my recovery is gone. No, mm-hmm. nothing's ever gone. You know? No. Yeah. It's, and it's, you and it's, have bad days. You know? Yes. Good days. <laughs> it's ever changed. It's like a wave. You know what I mean? It's like, it literally is like it's, and, and it's, I think it's being able to look back and, and have that self-awareness even on those days when you're triggered or something. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, that you're triggered, <laughs> you know, rather than being like, ah, oh, this, you know, so upset at yourself being like, well, at least I'm able to recognize that, you know? And, um, I think our best, the best version of ourselves, I genuinely think are when we are living a life of, of balance. Yes. I think that is the best version of yourself. (laughs) Like it really like no matter, and that is going to look different for every single person. But when we are able to have like, and, and there's that sense of, of I don't know if it's even like fulfillment or it's more peace or flow I think it's a sense of flow when we are at our absolute best for sure because no matter what the day throws at you you're you know who you are and you can just Mm -hmm. show up organically and your goal is not going away because you know what's going to happen it's yeah going to happen when it happens and right that's such a love state I think we've talked about that before on our other podcast but that's the the state you want to be in Yes, the, exactly. The state to be able to give and receive that love from the world here into the world. You know, I, I just, yeah, actually, I think that like sums up our episode like really beautifully, you know, and I think I've, I've known that, but I've never actually quite said that out loud that like, I think genuinely like the best version of ourselves is, is that type of person is, is that balanced us that, um, ability to to find yeah peace again peace in the present yeah (laughs) yeah and yeah because all we have is this moment I mean really there we could go down a whole rabbit hole but we won't today and maybe next yeah but (laughs) yeah um yeah we just have this moment we got to make the the most of it so Mm -hmm. yep Exactly. Exactly. Well, this has been an awesome topic that we could chat about for a million years. Probably. (laughs) (laughs) And it's great. It's great. It's great. (laughs) Whether one person is listening or a thousand. Hello to you. (laughs) Thank you for being here. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I look forward to interviewing our next guest um, about this. So that might be you, whoever you are. Yeah. So reach out <laughs> if you want to be on Unwritten. <laughs> yes, exactly. We would love to have you. Um, yeah. Well, thanks, Shauna. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Chloe. <laughs> All right. Have a good day or night, everybody. <laughs> good night or good day. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for being part of Unwritten. Our podcast is your podcast. Do you want your story to be heard? Follow us on Instagram at unwritten.podcast and TikTok at unwrittenpodcast.